Philosophers love to vilify Richard Dawkins any opportunity they get. And this couldn't be more true than in this OCR A-level textbook, where Dawkins is presented as the paradigmatic materialist monist. I'll very shortly explain what that means and read what the authors say about him. But first, let's look at what Dawkins has to say about the soul. In a 1999 debate with Steven Pinker, entitled Is Science Killing the Soul?, Dawkins approaches the question by distinguishing between two understandings of the word soul. Soul 1 is the traditional religious understanding of soul. He references a number of definitions from the Oxford Dictionary, which variably describe the soul as a principle of life, animating existence, or a principle of thought and action, or a spiritual part of a person that can survive death and exist independently from the body. One way or the other, he has captured the soul as understood by Plato, Aquinas, and Descartes. He treats soul one as a failed scientific hypothesis. It is a theory that posits that some immaterial and non-physical principle is needed to animate the body. As he says, it's the theory according to which a body has to be animated by some anima, vitalized by a vital force, energized by some mysterious energy, spiritualized by some mysterious spirit. Science, he says, has either killed soul one or is in the process of doing so. The thought seems to be that science can explain the workings of the body without recourse to the soul. Dawkins is clearly a materialistic monist. He's a monist rather than a dualist because he believes reality is composed of a single substance. And he's a materialist because he believes that that single substance is matter. It's not something immaterial or supernatural or spiritual. Quotes from his impressive bibliography reinforce this position. There is no spirit-driven life force, no throbbing, heaving, polulating, protoplasmic, mystic jelly. Life is just bites and bites of digital information. We are survival machines, robot vehicles blindly programmed to preserve the selfish molecules known as genes. Soul 1 contrasts with Soul 2, which the Oxford Dictionary defines as intellectual or spiritual power, high development of the mental faculties, also, in somewhat weakened sense, deep feeling, sensitivity. Soul 2 is captured by the term soulfulness. Dawkins believes that, far from killing Soul 2, science enriches Soul 2 by unravelling the intricacies and complexities of nature so that we can understand the beauty of a sunset or a rainbow, science fuels our wonder and amazement at the world in which we live. Science, he says, gives the soul constant and exhilarating rebirth. So here we go. This is what the OCR textbook has to say in its scathing review of Dawkins' position. Dawkins appears to be ambiguous about whether science has killed religion. He says that science is killing or has killed religion. Only one of these statements can be true. He does not explain this statement, nor does he justify it with evidence. This does not seem to be a scientific approach. But if for Dawkins everything, including the mind, is physical, then how can consciousness happen? How can humans make real choices and have individual emotions? Dawkins suggests that science will explain these issues one day. Again, however, Dawkins has no sound evidence to support this view. So, in one way, his argument seems as tenuous as those of religious believers. We must ask ourselves, is Dawkins' position as tenuous as religious belief? Well, first of all, I'm not entirely convinced that religious belief is always tenuous. But even so, it doesn't matter what religious believers think. I thought we were concerned about philosophy and the arguments. Shouldn't we be asking whether Dawkins' materialist monism is as tenuous as substance dualism? Well, first of all, is substance dualism tenuous? Well, Descartes' position surely is. He posits an invisible substance. There's no dimensions, no shape, no spatial location. It is entirely non-physical, yet it is the real you rather than the body, and it interacts with the body via the pineal gland, whose function, as science has now shown, is to regulate sleep. In fact, you can cut out the pineal gland and still be a thinking thing. Dawkins is certainly right that science has killed Descartes' position on the soul. Is materialistic monism as tenuous as this? Well, look around you. You're a material body in a material world. 
that much you can verify. It seems to me that the burden of proof is on the dualist who conjure up some additional substance that is beyond the means of empirical verification in order to explain phenomena that actually we might be able to explain simply with recourse to the brain. Now, it may very well be true that science lacks the tools to give a satisfactory explanation of consciousness. But even if that were the case, even if that turns out to be the case, would a better explanation involve an immaterial soul? It's a very interesting topic, so uh, feel free to tell me what you think. I love to, to read your theories. If you want to understand more about the soul, I do have this playlist about the soul where we look about we look at more deeply at Descartes, for instance, and Gilbert Ryle's famous critique of his view. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>